You hear all the people around the game, and you know that this first Saturday in May is such a key part of their annual calendar, maybe the brightest. And for two of the best and the most familiar faces in American horse racing, it has to be a different feeling Derby Day and Derby Week as well. Bob Baffert's won the Kentucky Derby as a trainer five times, Mike Smith as a jockey twice. Mike was on the Triple Crown win with Justify in 2018, one of the two Baffert Triple Crowns, Bob winning, of course, with Farrow in 2015. It's great to have both of you with us, but it's a bummer to speak to you virtually here. It would be so much nicer to be doing it at Churchill Downs. What is it like to be here the first Saturday of May? And Bob and Mike, we're not in Louisville. Well, I, you know what? The thing is, we it's weird not being there. Right now, we'd be in Louisville. We'd be in the trenches. We'd, uh, everybody would be showing up. You'd have all these. The media would be there, the excitement the thrill and um, watching the horses work. You get to see everybody's horse. That's what makes the, the Derby so, so beautiful is that you get to see all these horses come in there and the people and everybody's on their is, is tense. You know, there's a lot of pressure on us, but at the same time, it, it's what we live for. And it's what horse racing, you know, is, is all about this time of year. Yeah. Normally we'd have a lot of family and friends, uh, you know, that they're coming to the Derby and it'd be a, very exciting time for us uh, right now so it's it's really just it's really strange it's different and i'm trying to trying to figure it all out ourselves but uh hopefully we'll get through this soon and and we'll actually have it as with every walk of life there are different impacts in every part of american sports mike uh first for you and then bob uh, you after that for you as a jockey what has this stretch been like as we have mostly not totally but mostly have racing shut down around america yeah, for me, uh, just trying to stay as fit as possible. I've, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a gym rat uh, and go to the gym quite a bit. But since we haven't been able to do that, I've just doubled up on my cardio. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of road work and, and a lot of bike work. I'm back on that bike, and, and I, I realize how dangerous riding a bike is out on the highway. <laughs> so I want to get back to racing sometimes so I don't get run over. Well, I haven't been doing any cardio or anything. You know, I'm just I've been locked up. At least I get to go out. <laughs> To the track in the morning and uh you know train train these horses and and they still have to be they have to go out every day we have to keep them going but it's it, it's been different you know and unfortunately like jill who loves the horses she can't go out to the barn because it's very restricted we you know you have to wear your mask take temperature so it's pretty shut down santa anita so uh it, it's weird there's nobody out there you, there's no one to talk to Bob, you mentioned your wife, Jill, who did the great job of putting that American Pharaoh beautiful picture behind you. As we are looking back here, when we go back to the Derby and American Pharaoh, what were your feelings as you were coming in with all the hype around the horse? You know, I've been through the Triple Crown three times already with my other horses, Silver Charm, Real Quiet, More Emblem. But, you know, I, I knew that this was, if I was going to win the Triple Crown, the way this horse ran in the Arkansas Derby, I knew this could be my last chance to win a Triple Crown. Uh, so that was added pressure, and I, I knew I had my other good horse in there, Dortmund. I didn't care who had won, but I knew if, if American Pharaoh could pull it off, that I think that was going to open the door for me for a Triple Crown. Bob, let me follow up on Pharaoh for a minute, because the people who do what you do for a living always talk about certain horses and the personality and how unique and different they are. What was it about Pharaoh that stood out from the other horses? Well, Pharaoh, he, Pharaoh loved human contact. He loved people. You could go up to him and he would just nuzzle his head into your lap. Um, most of the horses, they're, they're tough. They're like, you know, they're like defensive linebackers. You know, they're, they're on edge and they don't want to be messed with. They're stallions. And so, but Pharaoh was completely different and he was sweet. I mean, I've never had a horse that had that kind of, the mental, the mental, he was just a smart, smart horse. But once he got on the track, he was a different animal. He was a, a beast, you know, he was like, uh, you know, he's like, you know, Tom Brady, I've met Tom Brady, he's the nicest guy in the world. But when he gets on the, on the football field, I mean, he's a competitor, he's tough and, and a champion. So that, that's, you know, that, that's what Farrell was like. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your time. I know that it is such a unique and different time for all of us. And uh, I know all of you share with all the horsemen uh, the well wishes that uh, everyone in the game stays healthy and safe and that we can all be under the twin spires at a different time, but all together for the Kentucky Derby. Mike Smith, Bob Baffert, thank you, guys. We'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for, thank you, Mike.